Hey everybody, some gadget guy here, and as many of you may have noticed, I've recently started producing my videos at 60 frames per second HD. This move was achieved by switching out my Canon 7D for a Samsung NX30. One of the things that made me a little nervous about changing systems is of course lens selection, so I was really happy to find a box on my doorstep with a couple NX mount lenses to try out from my pals at Samsung. The first lens we'll be taking a look at is the 16mm f2.4 Pancake Prime. I'm a huge prime lens snob. I greatly prefer the image quality and low light capabilities of fixed focal length lenses over the focal flexibility of zoom lenses. It's my not so humble opinion that if you want to learn how to be a better photographer, you pick up a prime lens and learn how to zoom with your feet. But I digress. The 16 mm f2.4 is maybe one of the smallest lenses I've ever held for an APS-C camera system. Samsung does not build any full frame sensor cameras, so their lenses don't need to include the extra glass necessary to support 35mm style photography. With the lens and body cap on, it only weighs around 89 grams, making it an incredibly easy piece to throw into a small camera bag. You'll barely know it's there. When attached to my NX30, it barely clears the hand grip, making this a really discreet lens for folks into street and candid photography. As the NX30 approaches the size of a larger micro four thirds camera, it's not a particularly intimidating shooter, and the 16mm keeps the whole affair feeling a bit more like a rangefinder or nice point and shoot camera. Build quality is solid enough for its mostly plastic shell. Thankfully, we have a metal lens mount on tap. We're long past the days where even an inexpensive lens should come from a name brand company with a plastic mount. The focus ring uses Samsung's focus by wire system, which means focusing happens electronically, not mechanically. The autofocus on the NX30 is sure-footed and quick, though I do wish this lens had some kind of hardware toggle between autofocus and manual focus. Without a toggle, it takes a couple of menu buttons to switch over to full time manual focus, though you can make minor focus adjustments by turning the focus ring while half depressing the shutter button. Instead of a focus toggle, there is a quick settings button on this lens which will get you into an almost smartphone-like series of menus. I prefer actual hardware controls to these kinds of software menus, but if you're coming from a smartphone or a point and shoot, this quick menu will feel right at home. The lens provides two distinct advantages over the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. It's a little bit wider angle without approaching the barrel distortion of a fisheye lens, and it's about a full stop faster. When it's wide open, you can double the amount of light hitting the sensor for faster shutter speeds or to use a lower ISO for less noise while also getting a shallower depth of field. Speaking of that shallow depth of field, the bokeh is actually quite pleasant for this aperture. It's a fairly smooth overall presentation, but the effect of light through leaves can sometimes get a little edgy. Overall lens performance has been really solid. Center sharpness is good, wide open, but really starts to shine around f4. Distortion also creeps up at wider apertures on the edges of your photos, but it's not overly distracting, and thankfully I only saw tiny amounts of color fringing in the most extreme contrast situations. Colors are punchy and photos have a nice contrasty look. If anything, Samsung's JPEG rendering gets in the way here with a bit too much oversaturation. There is no image stabilization on board, so this isn't the best option for video if you're shooting handheld. That's one area the kit lens might actually be a superior choice. But the only other criticism I can lob at the 16 mm is its focusing motor is a little on the noisy side. A tiny high-pitched little pulse will accompany every focus action you make. The 16 mm pancake here represents a pretty solid bang for buck. Street price clocks in around $270, which is a fair bit cheaper than any lens this wide and fast I've ever used on a Canon APS-C camera. It's a great addition to the NX lineup, and if you shoot landscapes or are looking for a discreet lens, I definitely recommend checking one out. I'll of course leave links down below this video for more info. As always, thanks so much for watching and be sure to hit the subscribe button for more reviews like these and I would not be able to continue producing these videos if you all weren't out there sharing them with your family, friends, and on social media. Hit that thumbs up button and I will catch you all on the next review.